Hi there, it's Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. As quilters, we all have one fundamental problem. There's the rate that we quilt at, and then there's the rate that we acquire fabric at. So our consuming and our purchasing is always out of whack. Today, I'm going to talk to you about five strategies that we can use to help keep the in equilibrium. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. We live at a time when we have more choice of more quilting fabrics than any other time in the world. It is a truly great time to be a quilter. Fabric filled with possibilities, it's filled with hope, it's filled with color that can make our mood better, make us feel happier, but then it sits in our stash. Before we start, you need to know how much fabric you've got. So take a look around, add up your yardage, add up your fat quarters, add up your charm packs. <laughs> It doesn't need to be an exact science, it's an estimate. One of these scrapbook containers can contain up to 60 fat quarters. This is no judgment, and you need to look at it in terms of how many quilts you can make. But don't worry about the math. I've done all the hard work. I know that you can make a basic twin size quilt with four and a half yards of fabric, or two layer cakes, or seven charm squares, or 34 mini charm squares, or 20 fat quarters. So this is what a quilt looks like. Take a look in your stash and figure out how many quilts you can make. And divide that number by how many quilts you can actually make in a year. If you started quilting today, never buying anything more, how long can you quilt for till you're in a spot where you're comfortable? Is it one year? Is it two years? Some of us, it may be more than five. The trick is to know how much you have. Know your limit and quilt within it. And remember, everyone's different. Make sure you have some fast and easy go-to patterns. All your quilts do not need to be complex. In fact, it's usually nice to have sort of like a palette cleanser in between two heavy projects. Something fast, something simple, something you can put together in a weekend. And if you don't have some patterns, let me tell you about a, a great new app called Prequilt. Often when we look at our stash, we just have no clue where to begin. I've had this Kona Charm Square pack in my stash for about two years. It's time to prequilt it. This is the home screen and we're going to start a new design. So this is where you would hang out if you wanted to start from scratch, but we're gonna head over to community. And we're gonna play with the HST grid. And here we have a grid already made for us. I'm deleting these blocks because I'm not using them. These are the Kona colors in the charm pack. And I'm going to make six different HST pairs. To copy an HST, I just click on it and hit clone. To change the color, I click on Edit, and it brings up this screen. This is the Free Spirit palette. I want the Kona palette. I choose the color that I want. Then I click on the other side of the triangle. Then I choose the color that I want for that side, and then click Done. I'll continue this process until I have six HSTs. Most charm packs come with 42 pieces, so I'll eliminate some columns and some rows till it's six by seven. So this is where the magic starts to happen. So I click on this little square in the top left corner of the grid, and then I hit randomize blocks. And Prequilt automatically randomizes all my HSTs. You can also do the same process and randomize rotate. And you can do it again and again and you can rotate individual pieces, you can change color of individual pieces until you come up with a grid that you like. And then you can download a picture of your design with your color scheme if you want. Prequilt really helped me see the potential in these colors and it checked all my boxes. And under the Learn tab, they've got all sorts of tutorials to teach you how to do it too. If we're wanting our stash to go down, we have to consume more from our stash than we are buying. So, shop from your stash first. 
It's so important for you to handle your fabrics often. You know what's there. When you handle fabrics, it triggers your memory and your creative juices so you can come up with new projects or you remember ideas that you once had and that's why you bought the fabric. We end up having to buy containers for these fabrics to go into. And then we buy more containers because we buy more fabric. And then the ones on the bottom, we don't see anymore. And it's out of sight, out of mind. If you shop from your stash first, you can get those older fabrics to the front and incorporate them in your new projects. de-stash your fabrics. As you're going through your fabric, there's something that you don't love, get rid of it. We live in the age of the internet. There are so many de-stashing pages on Facebook and you've got Instagram. And if you don't even want to go to that hassle, donate it to your guild or donate it to Goodwill. There's always somebody who wants more fabric. Don't overbuy. When the pattern calls for half a yard, buy half a yard. Do not feel the need to buy three quarters or an extra yard. Most patterns have overages built in. Part of you might be panicking. What if I read the directions wrong and I make a cutting mistake? 10 years ago, this might've been a problem, but now you can just put a call out on Instagram or Facebook and most likely somebody else has this fabric in their stash or something very similar that you can sub in. Or you can do like me and just piece the fabric together. Here's a quilt. I cut one of the fabrics wrong. Can you find the block that has the mistake? Shop with a budget. Budget is not a four letter word. And so many people associate it with denial and having no fun. But truly, it's exactly the opposite. I'm not judging anyone. If you want to buy fabric as a hobby, go for it. But you can't take it with you. And though we dream of having a stash that looks like this, it's much more likely our stash looks like this. There's two real benefits from a budget. One, you don't overspend. And debt is a four-letter word. And two, it makes you value what you purchase more. And knowing that you're only able to buy a finite amount of fabric makes you think Think twice to be sure that that fabric is exactly what you want for your project. If you have a budget, you can choose to be intentional or you can choose to be impulsive, but you have a limit to what you can spend. I'm heading off to Nashville on the weekend for QuiltCon. I hope I see some of you there. If you found this information helpful, please take a moment to like this video. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. There's that little bell down there beside the subscribe button. Ding that if you want to be notified every time I put out new videos. Take care and I'll see you next time.